Stop being a little bitch. That is the topic of today's video. Stop being a little bitch so that you can reach your goals. But first, subscribe to uh, our YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell so that you can get more videos. Comment, subscribe, send me validation. Okay. I remember one time I was listening to an audio book from Grant Cardone called The 10X Rule. And one of the chapters in it was called Stop Being a Little Bitch. And he talked about the fact that the publisher wanted him to change the title of the book, but he wouldn't because the message that using vulgarity in that way helps get across is that sometimes you have to stop being soft. You have to stop being a wimp. You have to stop being a coward because life is hard. Life is hard enough as it is. And if you go through life without mental toughness, without strength, it's going to be harder on you. So that's why sometimes I do curse. I do things to shake you out and give you pattern interruptions to get you to wake up. Maybe I wouldn't be cursing if you were following through with the information. Maybe I wouldn't have to be so animated if you were standing up for yourself by living the life you're supposed to live. Stop being a little bitch. You know, I have a balance. Sometimes I'm very encouraging and warm and gentle, but sometimes I'm very harsh and crass. If you want that fluffy stuff, like you can go over to, you know, you can go to Tony Robbins and them channel, okay? Actually, speaking of, I watched Tony Robbins' documentary, and when he is out in the public, he's a very nice, warm, and gregarious guy. But if you actually watch the documentary where he is trying to really help people change, he uses a bunch of curse, curse words. He uses a bunch of bad language. He uses that as pattern interruptions because people are sleepwalking through life. If you go to a job that you hate every single day, you're sleepwalking through life. And I'm not saying that you'll go quit your job this instant, but if you never step outside and even think about or attempt to do something to get a different job or attempt to do something to start that side business, like you are letting life beat you down. Do you understand that? You are going to, if you want to live the type of life that you really want to live, you are going to have to fight for your own life. I've talked about this over and over again. Society's actively trying to make you soft. Look at the language. Look at the way that they're policing language with this political correctness. It's, it's no longer even really allowed to, you know, to call people soft, to call you a little bitch, to say you need to step up, to say you need to be responsible for yourself, to say you're being a wimp. All the messages now is you're helpless. You're so helpless. So, you know, just vote for the overlord of your choice and we'll fix it all for you because you're just, you know, you're too weak and pathetic to fix your own life. That's what they think. And if you believe those messages, that's the message you believe. If you believe that you need someone to come save you, you don't believe in yourself. And we have a society full of people who don't believe in themselves because they have been conditioned to be weak. You know, there's the whole phenomenon of the nice person. You know, the nice guy doesn't get the girl. The nice person gets walked all over. And it has nothing to do with being nice or being kind or being compassionate. It's that the archetype of the nice person, of the nice guy, is being weak. It's you have no spine. You have no boundaries. You have no respect for yourself. If you're too meek, what you're projecting out into the world is that you don't have confidence, that you don't respect yourself. So you have to build that confidence. How do you build that confidence? Like I always say, tap into your strengths. You are not so weak and pathetic that you're not good at something. I refuse to accept that as an answer. You are good at something. Parlay that into a path. Maybe if you sit in your basement and play video games all day, even that's a career now. Ninja, Fortnite player, makes half a million dollars a month. There is even an excuse for the video game 
player who locks themselves in their room for 12 hours a day to build a life path. I don't want to hear it. Every single person has some sort of aptitude or ability, and you have to focus on that to build a better life. But in order to focus on that and do it in a way that is going to project out into the world that can help you form a new path for yourself, you're just going to have to stop crying and whining about your life. I get it. Like on the one hand, I get why he, I get how people have justifiable excuses. Like a lot of, I just made a video about this. A lot of bad things happen to you that are not your fault, but are you going to lay down and let that totally deteriorate you and erode your life into dust? Or are you going to do something about it? Wake up. You know, I was giving, I was giving a speech in a speech club the other day. And, you know, it was my typical, you know, I'm even more animated when I'm giving speeches and I'm just rah, rah, razzle dazzle, dynamic speaking. But still, even after that, after I just gave a motivational speech about stepping out onto your own and doing something, there were people who in the next section of the speech where, you, you know, you're asked to volunteer and come up and give like little mini one or two minute talks. The majority of people in the room were afraid to come up and talk. And we're in a group of supportive people to try to help you learn, even in the most comfortable, safest environment to practice, people are still afraid. Fear is running the world. You know, Stephen Pressfield talks about this in The War of Art, the resistance. Like, I don't even know where the source, like, I, I know what that is so strong. That palpable sense of fear in that feeling you get in your stomach then it's like your heart drops to the bottom of your stomach when you're in a situation where you can face embarrassment and rejection it's not easy i know i know it's not easy but if it was easy everybody would do it if you want to be special you have to do things that people are unwilling to do and i know that i cannot force you to make any actions i know that no self-help arbiter can get you to do anything and i'll be the first to admit that there was a long time where i was too afraid to do things and i wasn't implementing things and i wasn't following through hell i put off making this youtube channel for years out of procrastination out of being a wimp out of just making these excuses of my head for why i couldn't create a successful channel but now i'm just doing it because i have nothing to lose and the funny thing is when you become successful in one area, like writing, I realized I just turned nothing into something and I had nothing to lose. Like even if it would have went south, like nothing would have happened. You don't really have anything to lose, but you have a lot to lose by not doing anything. You have a lot to lose by being a little bitch, by letting life push you around. And when people who get pushed around by life, it creates really a perverted sense of self, a really weird sense of self. You know, that's why sometimes people who get pushed around too much, you know, they lash out eventually because you just can't take being beaten from the world anymore. So don't let your meekness or your weakness or your fear manifest itself in a very negative way. Rather up front, I'd rather have myself be a little bit harsh to you up front, be a little bit mean to you up front, startle you awake and hurt your feelings a little bit than to just wash my hands of it. I could let you continue to be weak. I could shut down this channel. Everybody could shut down their channels and let you go about your life and let you get to the point where you're just so cemented in fear that your life whittles away and just ends I'm sorry, pathetically, not going after what you want after, you know, only having at best 80 productive years to live. It's kind of pathetic when you think about it. And I don't mean that to be harsh. I just mean in the judgment of it, like it just is not ideal. You have to be brave. Courage is not the absence of fear. It's acting in spite of fear. Do you think the people who stormed the beaches of Normandy were confident? and felt good about what they were doing? No, they were brave. They did it anyway, they had no choice. Put yourself in a situation where you have no choice. Put a gun to your head metaphorically and decide that you are going to get started, okay? U2.0 is the book. YouTube, subscribe, like, all other platforms. I will see you on the next video.